All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Chicago Bears. They're less than a week away from their season debut against the Green Bay Packers. I will admit a victory over Green Bay week one. I know it's just week one. It would go a very long way, and I think it would set the tone for what Chicago is looking to accomplish and what they believe they're about to accomplish this upcoming season and honestly for the foreseeable future. I want to bring this up to start tonight's video. Where are the Chicago Bears starters from last season? We're going to go down the list of a couple of players. Nick Morrow, linebacker, 17 starts for the Chicago Bears last season. Eagles practice squad. Sam Mustafer, 16 starts. Where is he now? Ravens practice squad. Joe Thomas, nine starts. Free agent. Michael Schofield, four starts. Free agent. Robert Quinn, seven starts. Free agent. Houston Carson, six starts. Free agent. Riley Reef, 10 starts. Patriots, second string. Armand Watts, 12 starts, Steelers third string, Travis Gibson, 10 starts, Titans second string. The list goes on and on and on of the 2022 Chicago Bears starters that are either free agents or on teams practice squads. And the point I am trying to make here is there is a misconception going on across the NFL media world right now that the Chicago Bears only improved in one facet, and that is DJ Moore. That's, it's literally, if you ask a non-Chicago Bears fan, be like, hey, how are you feeling about Chicago Bears this upcoming season? Be like, ah, you know, they, they picked up DJ Moore, but I'm not quite sold that they're quite there yet. No, 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 no. The Chicago Bears improved their entire roster. Their entire roster. Literally, we could have continued to go down that list at least 15 more players. Well, there's only so many starters. It's been a little traumatic. There's at least five more starters from last year's squad that are currently nowhere to be seen right now and that is not i'm not trying to flame the bears i just think that is a great indication and an example of ryan poles is not pace poles is not pace he's creating something new justin fields this is a big year for him is he the quarterback of the future we're going to discuss Chicago in tonight's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. Bears fans, if you could try and get this video to 500 likes, that would be the absolute world to me. As always, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So, you know, if we're keeping a buck here, here, here's some facts. All right, the Chicago Bears were in a lot of football games last season. They were in almost every single football game except for like the end of the season when it was kind of becoming a little bit clear. Like, eh, I don't really think Chicago's trying to win these football games. My point is the Bears were a lot more competitive than they than people think. You know, people look at the Bears of last season. They look at the three win team and they're like, ah. You know, even if they double it, you know, I guess that's a success, but they still have a long way to go. You know, Chicago realistically should have won five or six games this past season. I need to see wins. I know Justin Fields is a good talent. I personally believe Justin Fields is that guy. I think he's the long-term solution for the Chicago Bears starter. I think he's a perfect leader. I think he's a perfect role model to have as your franchise cornerstone. These things matter, by the way. Justin Fields, I think he's a professional. I think he's got a little bit of edge, a little bit of grit to him, which is exactly what you want, especially for a Chicago sports team. But they made moves. You know, this is a completely different Chicago Bears roster than it was last season. Obviously, the running back room looks completely different. Khalil Herbert, a lot more pop, a lot more zip, a lot more playmaking ability than kind of your hard-hitting David Montgomery. Dante Foreman comes over from Carolina. Rashawn Johnson, Travis Homer, great third down running back that was properly utilized with Seattle last season. He's running back four. You know, this is a very deep, very, very versatile running back room. And that's the reoccurring theme with the entire Chicago Bears offense. They're going to be able to get a lot more creative. There's a lot more versatility. There's a lot more depth in general. Now, with that being said, and we've talked about this time and time again on this channel, so we'll keep it quick. Offensive line is really solid, especially the future of the Bears offensive line. However, they're just lacking depth. So what I think the Chicago Bears, what people don't think or realize about the Chicago Bears is there's a lot of talent on this roster. There's a lot of playmakers on both sides of the ball, but the depth is going to take time. You know, this is Ryan Poles. How do you build? What, no matter the sport, how do you build a team? You build it through the draft. You improve through the draft. This is year two under Ryan Poles. So you have to be patient. The depth is going to take time. But if the Chicago Bears, specifically their offense, if they can just stay healthy, 
they should be fine. And it's mainly the offensive line. If your offensive line is mainly healthy, which by the way, Nate Davis is back at practice, is going to be good to go for week one. Great sign. Then the Bears could be looking at a 10 and 7, 9 and 8 season. I don't want the bear. If the Bears are going to be below 500, they need to get eight wins. They, they just need to get the job done. Justin Fields needs to win football games, and that's why you acquired so many of these players like DJ Moore. But you have a healthy Darnell Mooney. You have a healthy Chase Claypool. You've got veteran, or not even really a veteran, but you've just got a reliable guy in Equinemius St. Brown. I know you know some Bears fans aren't huge on his reliability, but I think Equinemius St. Brown is a reliable wide receiver four to be honest with you i think trent taylor tyler scott i think these guys are gonna you know clear them in the depth chart by the time the season is over tyler scott another great example of some playmaking some speed coming on over for the chicago bears building through the draft we got rashawn johnson and tyler scott the two new rookies coming on offensively with pop with zip high iq football players they're gonna make an impact you've got cole Komet, you've got robert tanya you've got mercedes lewis at the tight end position so I need a winning season here. You know, I just really need to see a winning season. So you have your true wide receiver one. You've got your improved offensive line. So to essentially summarize what I want to see from the Chicago Bears, what a successful Chicago Bears season would look like in my eyes, look look at the offseason additions defensively. Their defense last year, you could use the word off. I think their defense this season is going to be fine. If Justin Fields takes that leap to becoming a better or a more efficient, I should say, pocket passer, utilizing his feet still, if Justin Fields turns into him and DJ Moore is wide receiver one like we've seen, like we know he is, if Chase Claypool bounces back, if Darnell Moody stays healthy, this running back room utilizes your versatility, if your defense is fine, and your offense is top 10, you're probably looking at a 10 and seven season. You're looking at at least eight wins right there. We're in an offensively driven league. You know, you can't replicate the 85 Bears defense. The, the defensive rules have changed. The middle of the field is now being utilized. You know, this isn't 30, 40 years ago. You don't need the number one ranked defense in the National Football League to make the Super Bowl or to make the playoffs, rather. You know, the Super Bowl isn't necessarily... We, we Let's focus on the playoffs first before we get into Super Bowl conversations. But this is a big year. I really think, I mean, as it should be, a make-or-break season for Justin Fields. I want to see efficiency, but more importantly, I want to see wins. I don't even really care all that much about the efficiency as long as they're just getting the wins. So... They could be looking at 10 and 7. They could be looking at 7 and 10 if maybe that offensive line's a little bit injured, if the defense really isn't fine. But altogether, I think we're looking at at least, at least an eight-win Chicago Bears season. You know, I think eight wins, nine wins, that's enough for me to give the go-ahead for like, yep, Justin Fields is the guy. Let's continue to do what we're doing right now. If they lose less than that. If it isn't, you know, solely to blame with injuries. Well, you know, with a loaded quarterback class, the Chicago Bears will probably move on. But these are all things, you know, we can we can take into consideration. You know, we want to see regular season football. These are all just here's this is just hypotheticals, right? So that's it for tonight. Hit that like button, hit that sub button if you guys enjoy it. But most importantly, guys, how many wins did the Chicago Bears finish with this upcoming season?